Hey guys, welcome back to the Unity course. In this episode, we're going to be looking at component scenes and also game objects. Now, um, we've been playing around the game scene a little bit. We've been just creating some cube, creating a model we deleted as well. Uh, we just flushed everything out. Now we're back to having a clean scene. When I say clean scene, I'm talking about a scene that only contains a main camera and also a directional light, which is what you get by default when you create a new scene. And I'm going to prove this to you by clicking on Ctrl and N, which is um, also just a shortcut for new scene. You could be clicking here if you want. So when you create a new scene, you fall back on a scene that is called Untitled. It has a main camera and also a directional light. If you were to hit Ctrl S now, you would be saving a scene. So let's just call this, um, I'm just going to call this Menu for now. When I save this, it's actually saving it in the project folder as well. Let's actually put that in our scene folder and now we have two of those. So if I quickly double click on game, we're going to be in the game scene, which you can tell by looking at the R key up here, it just says game, but you can also tell by looking at the title of the Unity window. So at the very top hand side here, Unity Personal, I'm running 64 bit and then game.unity, which means it's running the game scene. If I go on menu, it changes the name up here as well. So this is something to actually be um, worry about. If you want to know which scene you're in, you simply have a look over here. Or even better, you have a look at the top hand side here. The, the reason I say it's a little bit better to look up here is because eventually, if you get more advanced with Unity, you can run multiple scenes at the same time. So really knowing which one you start from might be good. You look at the very top hand side here. Right. So. What exactly is the difference here? There is no difference with our two scenes at the moment. They both contain a main camera and also a directional light. However, if we go say in the menu scene, we create a cube and uh, let's just put that at the very center of the world. Let's create another one like this, why not? Let's, I'm, just, I'm just making a small shape really quickly. And now when I see this, I know that this is the menu scene. I can double click on game and it doesn't show that because those cubes that I just created, they're not part of the game scene. They're only part of the menu scene. So you really got to be understanding those uh, mechanics here where the R key and what is uh, contained in the scene is going to change if you change the scene. And that brings me to the next step that you need to understand. And this step is something that people that just rush in Unity tend to not get at all. And uh, it is the fact that every single objects you see, as you can tell, we have a, a scene that contains object. So the scene here contains objects, all of these five objects, all of those five objects, they all contain their own component. Now, let me just say that again. We have our scene, say menu scene, menu scene contains game objects. Here they are. That's all the game object that it contains and every single one of those Every single game object contains component. Let's talk about those components. Those components are everything you're going to be seeing listed below the name in the inspector. So right now, main camera has a transform, a camera, a GUI layer, a flare layer, and also a audio listener. The light has a transform and a light. The cube has a transform, a cube mesh filter, box collider, and mesh renderer. Now the other cube, they also have the same exact component as uh, the first one. However, they're not really the same actually. They're the same type of component, but they all behave uh, in a different manner. They all have their own unique entity. What I say by that is they might all have the same exact thing you see on the right here, but their transform is different. This one has the position at 0, 0, 0. This one has the position at 2, 0, 0. This one is minus two, zero, zero, and then so on. So even though they're all kind of the same object, they all contain the same type of component, they still have different values inside of them. They still have their own unique entities. So if I just go ahead and in my script, I say, um, grab the transform of cube, the first one, is going to actually just grab this. It's not going to move all the cubes at once. It is only going to move this guy here. If I say grab the transform of uh, my first cube and scale it up, it's only going to scale up 
the first cube. It's not going to scale all of them up, so only this guy. And it is really something you need to actually understand. Now one thing you might quit now one thing you might have noticed uh, with all the game objects we have is they all have one thing in common. They all have a transform component and that is something required. What do I mean by required? I mean that every single of those objects need to have a transform and that is because Unity needs to position it. So even if it's a game object that doesn't really have any like rendering stuff going on, it doesn't even have a model, it doesn't even have like a texture, anything, it's still going to have a position, a rotation and a scale. And I can prove this by going at the very top side here, create a empty game object, and that's basically just a empty game object. As you can tell, it's nothing here. I'm not even able to select it, but if I click here, it has a position and I can still move it around. So I've created an empty game object, but it still has a transform component that I can move around. I can even scale up if I wish. It does nothing because it's not actually just, you know, it's not scaling up a mesh. It's not really doing anything. It can simply just stay there and do its thing. Now, um, empty game object is going to be really useful a little bit later on. You're going to see why. It's because we can actually add components to every object. Let's have a quick look at, say, uh, the directional light here. It's a simple transform and it has something that we call light here. It's a light component. Now, if I go back to my empty game object really quickly, I start from fresh game object like this. It has a uh, position of 0, 0, 0. I can do add component and manually add a light to it. Now, there is a lot of components you're going to be seeing in Unity. There is just a tons of them. Um, but if we go under rendering, say light, we now have the exact same thing as this. Now they look different in the icon and that is because this one um, is directional by default but as you can tell we have the very same thing and we've created this one from scratch. So the only difference they have is a few settings down here that decides I think what type of shadow you're using. So there is two objects with the same type of component but they have different components by themselves. They have different values. They are basically unique. And you could be creating every single object you see here is uh, at the base at the base of it. It's just a simple empty game object. If we just go on our cube, we remove the mesh filter, we remove the mesh renderer. Oh, as you can tell, it's now gone. We can't really see the mesh, but we can still see the collider. And say so we remove that as well, we end up with an empty game object. So everything is just made out of game object. And now something I'd like you to know as well is that we can create components. So as you can tell, there was a light. Light was uh, just emitting some light, I guess. There is some collider. It's actually just used in the physics calculation. There is a mesh renderer which just tells uh, the engine to render the object. But there is also other components you could add and you can actually create them. Let's have a look at our script that we've created in the last episode. Our script is called Rotate. What you can do is actually take it and put it in the list right here. And now it adds up as a component. Now, this is what makes Unity exciting. This is where you actually start to run your code. This is where you have your custom logic coming in. It's when you create some component for your game object. Right now, our script doesn't really do anything. Uh, that's just the base text we get by default. If you have a look here on the inspector, that is what we got by default when we create our script. Nothing really happens here. I'm simply going to type in a line of code. You don't have to remember what I'm doing here, uh, but I'm simply going to do a transform, say rotate, rotate on the Y axis. So up times 90, the time, the delta time. Okay, so I'm basically just writing down a line. So our component has an effect on our cube. So let's have a look here. I have a cube. I'm going to just leave it hanging there. So right, there's nothing going on in that cube. It's just a normal cube. We don't have an additional component on it. If I press on play by clicking the little play button here or control P, this is my game scene. Really boring stuff. Nothing happens. That is my game right now, right? Now, what is going to happen is I'm going to duplicate this guy. Why not just put him like that? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my middle cubes, the one in the middle, 
and I'm going to add my rotate component to it simply by drag and dropping it like this or you can also drag and drop it directly in the scene on this guy. As you can tell, the first cube has those um, five components and the two others, they only have four. So all the same one that this one has, but not the rotate component. If I was to play this now, as you can tell, there is one right here. My game is playing right now, I'm in the scene view. The one in the middle has a rotation on it. And that is because this object just behaves depending on its component, right? Now this one doesn't have a rotate component, so it doesn't. it's not really allowed to rotate. Nobody's telling him to rotate. Now while the game is playing, I'm going to take this, the rotate script, and just drag and drop it on top of my object. And as you can tell, it starts rotating as well. So I just want you to make that D-click in your head that objects are going to have different behavior based on their component. Now, even though they're all cubes at the base, and we, we even copied them like from the first one to the second one, they're all copies. They behave differently because they were given different components. And this rotate script is not the same one as this one. They're on different objects and they're two different entities, so they're running separately their own course. Now, um, something that is really important to note is if I turn this off and I play it again, the modification I've done while the engine was playing, and I didn't mention this earlier and I should, um, the modification that I do while the engine is playing, so say I just decide to create another cube, why not, and just move this around here, good times, and then say, oh, just put a script on this one. The modification I do here are going to be reverted when I stop the engine, so let me just stop that. It goes back to what we had at first. So if you're like making your level, if you're just, um, tweaking some values, you should be doing it inside the uh, editor mode. So right now the game is not playing, so you should be doing it when the game is not playing, because when you're playing it, it just really registers how the game was when you first started, and it's going to restore it back to that state when you're done. But this is very good if you're just testing like some position. So if you're just moving this, having a look, does this look nice? No? Okay, let's go back to what it was. And if it did look nice, you can redo the modification after. So just remember that when you do something in, um, in play mode, it's going to go back to what it was before you start playing. And that is pretty much it, guys. And I'm going to end on this note. We have to understand that the scene is composed of game objects, and game objects have their components. So thanks again for tuning in, guys. In the next episode, we're going to be learning about... Um, we're going to be creating our first script, actually, or should I say component? I'm going to be saying both actually, so we're going to be creating our first script component and we're going to be applying it to some objects just to test out a little bit of coding, just to refresh our memories on some uh, coding syntax in c -sharp, why not? And that is pretty much it, so again, um, leave a like on the video if this helped you. Also leave a comment if you have anything to say, if you have anything to ask, don't be shy, just leave a comment down there, it helps me a lot on the stats as well, uh, it helps me just promote the video, so if you do that, that'd be awesome. Uh, else you can check out the Patreon page if you wish to support me, subscribe to the channel, that's always appreciated, and I will be seeing you guys in the next episode.